Welcome to Hearthstone Deck Tech Podcast, Season 2, Episode 3, Freeze Mage with So Legit. Welcome to Hearthstone Deck Tech. I'm your host, Ken. Uh, you are listening to Season 2, Episode 3, and we're talking Freeze Mage with a very special guest on today's podcast. Some of you may know him if you play on the standard rank ladder often um, in the top 500, top 200, 500 range, maybe top 100, 500 range. You've probably seen this name often and you probably thought he was playing uh conjurer's mage and were sorely disappointed when he hit you with something else so we were talking to <laughs> so legit david ramos uh from socal david welcome to the podcast happy to be here david uh you know i i went through your twitch i i'm a big fan of you man i i i caught you randomly on one stream maybe like a year and a half ago um I think maybe I had bumped into you on the legend ladder and I was like, oh, I, I wonder if this guy's streaming. Let me go see what kind of stuff he plays because you were playing uh, something that in the meta at the time I didn't uh, expect to see. And over the year, I've noticed that you always end up with high legend finishes and you never bring, um, I guess what people would call public enemy number one. Like I, I don't see you playing Temple Rogue. <laughs> You know, you always bring like freeze mage. Like typically, I always see like a freeze mage list or something really creative. Um, and I was wondering maybe if you could just tell people at home about maybe some of your accomplishments, notable accomplishments in the game, and your history with Hearthstone in general. Yeah, so I've been playing Hearthstone since early 2014, actually. Oh man, it's been like five years now. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I started it. That was uh, back in open beta, I think. Yeah, it was in, back in open beta. I think Pyroblast just got nerfed. It mm -hmm. used to be 8 mana, by the way. And yeah. then it, it changed to 10 mana. And I pretty much joined like right after that area. And I have I had some experience in card games. Not a whole like huge competitive background. Like I would play a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic with um, my middle school and high school friends. But... Um, it was like very casual and like we it was actually it was really fun back then because when we played with each other there wasn't really a meta we were just playing with the cards we had and like hearthstone is um is unique because it was like the first online card game that um that you can it, it was very accessible to play with other people in like a rank ladder yeah. right um no other card games really had that or like wasn't as big at the time anyways so like i'm playing so i play hearthstone you know figured out that ev everyone wants to play the same like three or four decks even back then and was like i always found that like that's fine and i get why they do that they want to win but i i like i really enjoyed deck building back in Ma both magic and Yu-Gi-Oh, and that kind of transferred over to Hearthstone. Like, I wanted to build my own decks. That's uh, why even now I'm still building my own decks instead of really playing the top tier decks. It's not that, like, I don't find the top tier decks, like, not fun or anything. Some of them, like, uh, I have a ton of fun. Like, even March this year, I finished number four playing Raiding Party Rogue. I forgot mm. what they called it back. I think I think we were calling it still Miracle Rogue. Yeah, yeah, that was like two. Yeah, that was like two months ago, and even that I finished. Yeah, I finished the season number four. And it was a really good deck. I actually really enjoy Rogue, but like now it's like I don't know for some reason I just don't find it as fun, even though it is like the number one, like <laughs> it is like uh, undisputably the number one deck right now, but for some reason, I don't know, I just don't find it as fun anymore, and that's why I just not play it, right? No, Instead, I... like, pretty much what I do with, like, every season is I try to build some fun stuff and, you know, just jam it on ladder. You know, see I... how far it goes. <laughs> I definitely feel that sentiment, because as the season starts, I always just try a different decks, and, you know, I'll try the whatever, quote-unquote, tier one decks early in the season, and, you know, they're obviously very powerful. And, you know, they yeah. they do have... Uh, winning sometimes feels great. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's, oh, yeah, uh, it's a good feeling. <laughs> but uh, I quickly lose interest in playing something that I see the mirror of often. Or, like, you know, I'm like, oh, everyone else is playing it. So it's not 
it's not really rewarding. It doesn't really feel rewarding to, or uh, innovative to play. And then I start just like my ladder climb just becomes messed up because I'm playing random shit. Like I would just like start playing the craziest stuff, <laughs> like you know, trying to figure out how to make tag Nosk Whisker or whatever that new le rogue legendary work in it. Oh, the rogue legendary. Yeah, you know, like I. I you know, yeah, and I, I know I noticed that, like, you know, that we have a similar kind of uh, mentality, except your execution is 100 percent better than mine, because, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know here you are, like, you know, top 200, uh, you know, with with freeze mage. Right. I guess, I guess you've been playing a lot of freeze mage this season. And uh, it's pretty I, incredible. I've basically man. only been playing freeze mage since Wrath of Shadows dropped, actually. Like, I think right now I have around 400 games logged. <laughs> Of wow, Jeffrey the mage. that yeah. is ridiculous. And we're talking about a post ice block uh, freeze mage. You know what I mean? Like you know where yeah. the strongest two cards in the deck are are, are pretty much gone now. Um, what what do you think are some of your proudest moments in your Hearthstone career? Like your major accomplishments, uh, whether it be a ladder finish or um, a tournament finish. What are some ones that stand out to you? Oh man, that, it's a it's really hard just to choose one. Because mm -hmm. well, like I've hit, bunch, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've hit um number one legend mm -hmm. and ladder uh twice now. The first time was uh with freeze mage. This was back in like patron warrior mm -hmm. was the most popular deck, and patron warrior was actually like, a hard counter to freeze mage, and I managed to hit uh, number one back that is... then, and that was that was super fun. I actually uh that was probably my my favorite um meta back you know, then. That is actually my favorite meta, and it was my favorite because I played Patron Warrior a lot, and I really yeah. felt like that matchup was 80-20. Like, if I lost to a Freeze Mage player, I must have drawn extremely yeah, it was a... horrible. I don't. I, I actually don't see how a Freeze, you know, a Freeze Mage player could actually beat a Patron Warrior <laughs> just because of the, the armor gain, you know what I mean? It's just ridiculous. But uh, Yeah, it's a terrible matchup, and then you can just, like, hold your armor smiths and then use, like, yeah. double whirlwind, gain, exactly. like, 30 yeah. armor in a turn or something. And, yeah. and, like, it was a hard matchup, but, like, winning the matchup, like, you just feel so happy about that. And when does the majority of ladder, and also Control Warrior was also a deck back then, yeah. also very popular. So then, that, like, just carrying into war in general is always going to be a tough matchup, and when just, like... 50% of like high ladders and it gets tough, but I don't know. We just pushed through somehow one games. That's amazing, man. Like one. you were talking, yeah. you're talking like <laughs> getting rank one in a meta that is definitely, you know, uh, not, <laughs> not favorable to, to freeze mage. Um, you know, with the grandmaster, the grandmaster format, uh, are there any players that you are surprised not to see make the top 48? or uh and if so why yeah um actually one person that i'm actually really surprised um didn't make it to grandmaster was my friend hawk me um mm. he 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 um he made the top eight in worlds in 2016 i believe yeah 2016 it was 2015 no 2016 in 2016 he made top eight worlds and he brought like he brought like Blood Warriors, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a warrior deck, and it was like super wacky. It didn't do too well, but it, he, he still made top eight that year. And I really think he's like a really cool person, really good at the game. Um, his closest spot, like, um, they released the, um, the criteria of like each spot, and one of them was top prize earner, which was um, given to Strife Crow in NA. Yeah. And I don't know the exact numbers, but Hot Meows was actually like just right under Strife Crow, mm -hmm. like just barely, almost making it. Um, but like, if, if he was, um, I think if he did better in like 2018, like it was unfortunate Blizzard didn't really announce these yeah. changes earlier. If they said like uh, that 2018 results were going to be like this important for the future of competitive Hearthstone, then I think he would have tried like a lot harder. Yeah. He could have probably pushed uh, Strife Crow out of the top prize spot um, if he knew about that. And I don't, th I don't really think Strife Crow really competed mm -hmm. like last year. Like he's still a good player and all that, but like the top earners, uh, top prize earner spot would have gone to 
odd me out if we knew about these changes earlier, I think. Yeah, and like know, he always gets yeah, he always gets like good results. So I think he really would fit the grandmasters, but you know, the fact is I, Yeah, I mean there there really are just a lot of very, very good Hearthstone players out there. And forty eight spots really just isn't is not enough to capitalize on all of them. Especially when it seems yeah, like I, those spots are given retroactively. You know, where it's like, Okay, hey, you guys play Hearthstone and then you know, one year later, it's like, okay, uh, here's the criteria. So we're going to pick whoever fit this criteria now, which is... Yeah, I totally know. agree. I think it could have been pushed out way better. Oh, for like, sure. Uh, Definitely. could have been told, like, way earlier. I think there are a lot of changes could be made to the system, but hopefully they see that and they do push out changes. Like, I think... Rotating two spots in Grandmasters is just uh, per year is just way too little. Yeah, that is, yeah, that's ridiculous. That is, it's, it makes the barrier for entry just way too competitive. And I, I mean, just even like qualifying, do these, uh, doing these uh, random twelve round qualifiers to try to make it, um, yeah, to make it to go to Vegas is like, ridiculous. I think, um, yeah, I think uh, Mega Man Music on Twitter, he like crunch, he does like a bunch of stat stuff, and I think he like crunched the numbers. Mm -hmm. Um, at, he crunched the numbers. Um, and if you use like the win rates of like the best players, like Hunter Race, mm -hmm. Jesse, and Muzzy, like I, it was something like they only have like a five percent chance of making it into Grandmaster, something like that. It, like it's insane. Yeah, that's like, basically. Yeah. Like, if they were to go through the current system, like, <laughs> yeah, it's it's difficult. The current, I, it's crazy. I mean, because really, that current system is not only do you have to be an exceptional player, but you have to be exceptionally lucky. Because, yeah, uh, exactly. you know, I mean, you are a victim to your draws, victim to the matchups, you're victim to 12 rounds. And then that's just, <laughs> that's just to go to Vegas. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, dude. That's... Yeah, you can play the best decks and be the best player, and that doesn't guarantee that you can make a Grandmaster. Even if you were to win Vegas, that doesn't even guarantee you um, a spot in Grandmasters, apparently. Yeah, I, this, I, I, well, you know, I, I'm positive, or I, I, I'm hopeful and optimistic that, uh, you know, they maybe look at this and, and realize that, yeah, you know, maybe... We can change things uh, around a little bit more. I, I don't know. I, I know the first round of Grandmasters just happened, right? They just had a couple games like it's, the other day. I think it's still. I think it's still happening, like right now. Yeah, so, it, it, it actually is. <laughs> I mean, some of those games are pretty awesome, but you can and you know, like to be fair, uh, all Hearthstone players always get really critical watching other people play. Like you know, oh hey, these guys miss lethal here or. You know, uh, they played this turn wrong, and you know the result should have been two zero. This person or whatnot, but um, you can see like nerves and stuff are really affecting a lot of players currently in grandmasters because a lot of games, uh, you know, some players won, and I, I they shouldn't have won those games that they won, and uh, like other players either miss lethal or or whatnot. But I mean, I guess that that always goes with the territory. It's pretty, uh, it's a high profile tournament and all that. Um, you know, yeah, I mean, it, it's Hearthstone. That's just how it works. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what are, what are, three basic principles that um, people who don't consistently finish in the top two hundred to five hundred range? What are three basic principles that they could probably improve on or focus on to help them with that uh, legend climb? um basically if you're trying to push for like super high legend ranks um you can't you have to play more quality games um a problem that i had was i used to play or most of my games you actually used to just be like on autopilot while i like do something else watch netflix and stuff but if you do that like you'll win some games but you're not maximizing your chances of winning all these games um you do want to pick a deck that you're comfortable with. Um, like, if the top deck in the meta, like, you're not, you don't want to play it, that really does affect your mentality, especially if you're jamming that deck for, like, hundreds of games yep. a season. 
right? Um, you just you you really want to choose a deck, one that you like and enjoy, and then just play quality games with it. Um, you basically just want to maximize your win rate, put the time into it. Um, also, try to like set up goals. Like, um, you don't need to make the top two hundred push um, immediately, right? Like, you can start by going for like one k, and next season you can go for like seven hundred, four hundred. Just just uh, make your way up there, and um, you know you work hard enough. I think you anyone can get there. I I actually think that if you can hit legends, then you can hit top two hundred legend. Um, you mentioned that uh, focusing on the quality of your decision making and the games in general versus the quantity of games. But would you say that there is still a minimum volume of games that would need to be played within a month to with a respectable win rate in um, order to finish in High Legend? Um, well, the best strategy uh, for a top finish is to like make it up there first and then cap there and mm. like don't play anymore but that's really if you really want like the top 200 finish um yeah yeah that's going to t like um like the more the pl you play the better you are of course um if you just keep practicing um i still think that quality and having a highest win rate is the most important thing higher win rate means that you get to play less games and yeah, um, the amount of games isn't that big of a factor as long as your win rate is super high, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in so your... of course, like get, having a super high win rate isn't that easy. You, oh yeah, you definitely have to not. like play the best you can, right? In your i in your normal monthly climb, like how quick are you hitting legend do you think i mean you're hitting it within the first four days or first seven days do you like not set um, hitting actual legend and getting that initial early uh high legend rank um as a priority or um it really, really trying to prioritize it really the yeah it really depends um i think january of this year yeah january of this year um I hit legend day one of the season, but that was mostly because like play. Uh, I made playoffs, mm -hmm. and I wanted to jam like the best decks in the game to figure out the lineup that was happening in like two weeks. Mm -hmm. So I was just playing the best decks, and then I hit legend on like the first day. That was cool. But um, after that, I haven't really rushed legend. Like I like to take it easy most of the time. Mm -hmm. Just play the, the fun decks. That's what I usually do anyways, um, most seasons. Um, do you... Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you... When, when you sit down to play Hearthstone, do you already know how long you're going to play for? Like, I mean, you're sitting down and you're like, I'm going to play f four hours of Hearthstone today. Or do you just sometimes just play and, you know, decide? Oh, or do you, do you um, aim for, like, a goal? Like, I'm, I'm going to try to ca climb a couple ranks here. Or, you know, tr try to hit this before I camp off? Or are you just playing it by feel? Not and just be like, really. oh, you know, I'm tired. I don't want to play anymore. Yeah, um, not really. Um, it uh, Sometimes, like, back when ladder mattered a lot more and, like, having to finish mattered a lot more, um, I would try a lot harder to actually climb as best as I can. Mm -hmm. And I'll try to, like, hit a rank before I stop playing. But now it's like, I don't care that much how quickly i climb the legend i kind of just play whenever uh when i stream when i stream i, I try to end the stream at, at least with like climb maybe one or two ranks first before that happens mm. that's usually how it goes cool i mean hey so you know we were talking a little earlier and you mentioned that you're going to graduate in a month um so you know as a new almost a new graduate going out into the world uh, what are you looking forward to in the future, uh, in real life, as well as uh, in the future of Hearthstone and, and what you do in Hearthstone in general? Honestly, in real life, I'm not 100% sure yet. Like, I'm ready to graduate. I've been thinking about it for a really long time, but it's like, I don't know. I can't really 
choose one thing that I want to do. I feel like I'm just going to see what I can get mm -hmm. and then move from there. Ideally, I want to eventually become a stockbroker, though. Mm. That's one thing. Eventually. Cool. That's, that's my end game. <laughs> As for Hearthstone, um, I don't know. I... With the current system, it's really hard to like reach the highest levels of um, competition, which is the Masters. Um, I hope to. I can't make Vegas because Vegas is actually on my graduation day, wow. so I didn't. Yeah, I couldn't uh, compete in the qualifiers for that. But for Seoul, which is the next Masters tour. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll be competing the qualifiers for that. Hopefully, I get to fly over to Korea. And man, when really cool. when is the Masters for Korea? I man, maybe I should just go fly and watch that. <laughs> I believe it's August. Um, it's mid August. It's Holy mid -August. shit! Really, yeah. August? That's just around yeah. the corner. Man. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. I, um, it is cool that um, I don't know if you heard about this, but they actually changed like some of the rulings on qualifying like they're gonna have like before it would be three qualifiers per day um each region they're lowering it down to two qualifiers but instead of only one winner there's gonna be two mm. yeah um and they're also changing it um from swiss to single elimination oh so hopefully wow. these yeah hopefully hopefully that means that these cups do go faster because before they are actually taking like 13 plus hours just dude i it was, it's ridiculous it it's ridiculous but yeah, you you like, think the size of those cups will still be the same though like it'll be a 12 player or i mean there's 12 rounds in a cup but how many players are in one cup you know what i'm saying i mean it goes up to like 200 something um sheesh because a two hundred, yeah, I mean, a single elimination cup with two hundred players is still gonna take some time. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully it it takes like um the reason they said they want to use this system is because it would be easier for like people with jobs. It'll be more accessible. Mm -hmm. But like the current state of it, um, before these changes, um, it feels like you actually have to commit like much more time. Yeah yeah into actually uh qualifying so it's like i don't any so like these changes need to be made i hope that more changes are going to be made in the future but uh we'll see yeah no definitely i because you cannot there's no way i or i mean i wouldn't advise you know <laughs> putting aside 14 hours of your day to for the chance yeah. you know for that the chance that your good play is going to be enough to qualify that is uh absurd yeah. you know what i mean and i, I was yeah, talking you to, have media. to commit an entire day yeah that's ridiculous i was talking to media a couple episodes ago and we were talking about how uh being second place feels just as bad as being last like if even maybe even worse simply because you know well you you got the same amount right as last except you wasted 14 more hours so like yeah i agree um like you get packs but that doesn't really mean much if you're competing yeah i mean we all know what you're competing for at that point like no one really cares you know yeah pretty much like at lower levels yeah packs are cool but most people they don't they don't need the packs you yeah. probably have all the cards that they ever want <laughs> you know hey um i was so you know i was watching your stream uh, and yeah. I noticed that most of the cards in your freeze mage deck are all gold. I mean, except uh, for like, uh, you know, yeah, like you didn't have a power creation. I, is mage your favorite class? It is. It is. Um, I actually just passed twenty five thousand wins, uh, play mode wins total, Bro. and mage is at mage is the most at four point five k wins. Um, I've been I played like a lot of freeze mage like. Mage has actually been sitting at like three thousand for like the longest time, but that's because like I probably um, when Freeze Mage was relevant, which was like several years, mm -hmm. two or three years, um, I think I had around like two thousand of those just Freeze Mage. <laughs> that's ridiculous, man. That is crazy. Yeah, that's my favorite. So Freeze yeah, Mage and is like your favorite when the rotation. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
It is. Um, and like I always wanted a Golden Freeze Mage deck, mm -hmm. but never really had the dust to like. There's always like other stuff that I would um rather build because like yeah. Golden Cards is like not a very high priority. For sure. Then the rotation happened, and then I had all this dust. Mm -hmm. I I I did the math. It cost it would cost me fifty k dust to have a full golden freeze mage deck. Um, and after dusting, I had around like thirty five k or something. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hey, I can I can craft most. And I also pulled golden calicos. Oh, okay. which is part of the freeze mage list, right? Yeah. So I figured, all right, if there's a time to make golden freeze mage, it would be right now. <laughs> I also think that like freeze mage hasn't been good in a very long time, and I think is actually like, really strong right now. So I'm like, hey, why not? <laughs> so you know what? On that note, um, let's talk a little bit about this deck list that you have today. But before we get into the deck mm -hmm. list, I just wanted to ask. What is your favorite iteration of Freeze Mage? Like, what, what, uh, you know, when did you like, I guess, the archetype the most? And was it because of the power of the deck itself? Um, or the meta? Oh. Did it just dominate a special kind of meta? Mm, it's hard to say because, like, Freeze Mage is a deck I've been playing since open beta. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, the, I remember the first version of Freeze Mage running, like, mirror and uh mirror images yeah like just as a defensive tool azure drakes yeah um, good old azure it didn't Drake, even run that guy. oh yeah i miss that card yeah. <laughs> even i think it was even running sorcerer's apprentice like oh it was so it was so good back do, then <laughs> do you remember do you, you don't remember what mind control costs eight do you um i don't think i was playing back then i think like when mind control costed 10 was like around the same time pyroblast uh, uh, i think freeze mage is such a wild uh, deck man i mean so so you have this list and you know honestly you're the only player i know that's playing freeze mage because right now most oh, players yeah, nobody playing, playing this deck they're like playing conjures calling or like big hand mage whatever you call it and or they're playing the that mixture that has mana cyclone and um, yeah, I think, I think uh, people are calling it Miracle Mage. They either call it Miracle Mage or Cyclone Mage. One, uh, one of the two. You know what? I, I yeah, think that, that deck is fun. Like, it making is, a it bunch is. of spells I've is tried it. freaking amazing. But that's that's for a different episode, right? We'll, we'll get Kriya or somebody on for that. But today, we're talking about <laughs> Freeze Mage. So for those of you who are listening to the podcast and uh, you know, are too lazy to download the list in the description, we have two Ray of Frost, one Acidic Swamp Ooze, one Blood Mage Downos, two Doomsayers, two Frostbolts, one Acolyte of Pain, two Intellects, two Novas, uh, two Arcane Keysmiths, two Fireballs, uh, two Rotten Apple Bombs, um, two Sun Reaver War Mage, one Zilliax, two Blizzard, one Archmage Antonitis, one Flame Strike. Um, oh, actually, you know what? I might have messed this list up. Uh, one Power of Creation, or two Power of Creation, one Alex Straza. Uh, one Caligos and one Pyroblast. I think there's a second card here. Anyway, that's pretty much the list. I, I you know, I think um, I, I, th I think you missed Caligos and Zilliax, but yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, we have a Caligos and we I think I said and we have a Zilliax, right? So yep, you'll see yep. the list on the on the YouTube video. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about this, like? Is this what decks do you want to face with this, and why did you choose to play this outside of the fact that you'd love to play Freeze Mage? So this version of Freeze Mage, oh man, I've built like four different versions, but this specific one is mostly for a ladder full of rogues, um, warriors, and to some degree hunters. Um, it's running a lot of defensive cards like Rotten Apple Bomb, just because it's. It's heal and mage doesn't really have access to heal, but I think rotten apple bomb actually does a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, cards like Zilliax, um, arcane key smith can hit ice barrier. at um, just more defensive tools. Um, but yeah, basically this is this list is for the decks you are going to see most of on ladder. I think. Um, in general. 
you want to queue um this deck is mostly for rogues or primarily for rogues and if you're you're always happy to queue into like some zoo type deck mm -hmm. uh zoo lock um or lock shaman those stuff um those have historically been really good matchup for freeze mage um stuff like warrior and hunter like even though it's sort of tech towards those you don't want to queue into them you they're not like um it's not auto lose or anything like um freeze mage has actually always been like really bad versus all types of warrior just because armor destroys yeah. decks that focus on limited amounts of burn but with this deck since you run cards like power of creation caligos um even uh archmage and pyro blast you have you have so much more burst. Uh, you can actually pressure the warrior with power, or just with minion pressure, and you can actually win those games. Hunter is pretty hard, but you can win that matchup. Um, they do; they are very aggressive really early. But if you mulligan for stuff like Keith Smith, Rotten Apple Bomb, um, even like Frostbolt Doomsayer, then you, you can play defensively and win those games. When we when we talk about Hunter, are we? Uh, which one is the more difficult archetype to deal with? The bomb hunter the uh, one that, or the that other hunter, like 9 um, I would probably say bomb hunter. Um, the only other hunter I really see is like secret mid-range hunter. Hmm. But that deck, um, they're actually not as aggressive as they were like pre-expansion. Um, you can actually just never proc any of their secrets just like pass a bunch of turns um burn them down you don't even need to set up alex because they don't really have heal and you just burn them and you, like they actually give you a lot of time so what are the typical lines of play um before the win condition like um how in like how many matchups are you al uh, actually going alex into double fireball frost and you know what other matchups were do you just like have to run them out of resources and you know just drop some big stuff like a power creation yeah so the thing about freeze mage is that its win condition is very flexible you can either start burning them down early or you can go for like an alex Straza, or you can try to set up an alex or uh, alex Straza play and do a bunch of stuff before then and the hardest part about Freeze Mage is actually identifying that win condition. Or maybe not the hardest part, but that's the really big part. And when you do that, you have to pretty much look several turns ahead. Mm -hmm. Like, um, sometimes you want to hold your Doomsayers, even if it's like the only play you have. Sometimes you want to hold your Doomsayers because like, it, doesn't re it might not set up anything for the next turn. Um, a lot of the time, like, I would have, like, Power of Creation in my hand. It would be, like, turn six or something. And I could play Doomsayer right now, but I'd rather play Doomsayer on, like, turn seven. seven. Yeah. Yeah, so I can set up a Power of Creation on an empty board the next turn. And it's, like, stuff like that. Like, you really do need to look into the future, plan out your plays, and not just, not just play out cards that are glowing green, you know? <laughs> <laughs> No, I, you know, that's a great point, actually. That, that example is perfect. Um, and, you know, I suggest those of you listening to catch uh, his stream at twitch.tv slash so legit HS. Um, because you actually, I, yesterday, you had a, a match versus a, um, versus a conjure mage where, like, that same line of play came into to question, right? Like, you skipped the turn six on, like, killing a Zilliax on six and instead waited one more turn to drop the doomsayer on seven for a turn eight and uh i mean you know that guy kriya it was another really good player he uh yeah. eventually ended up getting a huge power creation or um conjuring board with a bunch of giants but you were able to uh slow that board down and find lethal over the course of the next couple of turns with the double fireball frostbolt and uh yeah I so think i mean that's list... pretty amazing yeah, I think um, with that list um, that I've been using the last few days, because uh, um, the list right now um, for the podcast, 
Um, this was actually before Miracle Mage or Miracle slash Cyclone Mage was popular. That deck only became popular like last week, I think. So I actually changed the deck a bit. I took out um, Rotten Apple Bombs to put in Polymorphs. Mm -hmm. Just because um, against Miracle Mage, people always expect the mirror of your mage because it's the most popular mage deck right now. Yeah. And sometimes they'll just drop a giant and not set up for like a one turn giant conjure turn. So if they just throw the giant down, then you can actually um, actually have counterplay with Polymorph, and that really swings the game. In terms of matchup, do you feel that that is one of the most difficult matchups? The Conjuring, you know, Conjurer's Mage, Cyclone um, Mage? Or... What are the decks that you don't want to see as Freeze Mage? As Freeze Mage, um, you definitely don't want to see Control Warrior, um, Bomb Hunter. Um, I'm actually okay queuing into Miracle Mage if you run Polymorph. Mm -hmm. If not, then it's actually a lot harder because you can. You only have a limited amount of freeze. Um, once you stop freezing their board, then, well, they have like five eight eights on board. Yeah. Pushing a million damage on your face, you can't really do much. It's really hard to like freeze and burn them at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, Dragon Mage was a lot easier of a matchup for some reason. Even though they do run more minions, I feel like they don't pressure sure, is hard, yeah. hard for some reason it's weird no that makes but, sense yeah because like they're a minion based deck um and you're a deck that pretty much beats decks that go wide yeah right since you have all your freezes and stuff and i don't know like it's it, for some reason it's easier to to kill dragon mages no it makes sense makes sense um how how pivotal or how good of a card is Caligos? Um, like, what? Actually, oh man, I actually really love Caligos. Yeah. Um, it does. It is a pretty slow card, but just having it on board, even for just one turn, can really swing the game. Like, even against like, if you can make it to turn ten against like Rogue or something, you can do something like Caligos uh, freeze the board. They're by then they probably already used their saps. Mm -hmm. Um, or like any hard removal and then you can just follow up with a power of creation and then like clear the board in the same turn yeah or you can even set up like um if you have like another minion you can even go caligos aoe freeze then the next turn go like alex Straza, pyroblast Pyro yeah Zero. yeah that's yeah messed up. Fish game. that is not nice it's crazy. Yeah. i'm actually so glad that they printed this card because mage has never gotten good legendaries for a very long time and it's the first time they've gotten oh well, uh, caligos and Khadgar. the mm, first time that got two, yeah. Got a, yeah two good legendaries that's, that's crazy to me <laughs> on separate ends of the spectrum well i guess Khadgar is kind of a later gameplay too i guess when you think about it it's not really a turn three or four play but at earliest it's like a turn five play if you somehow get a giant and then you have Khadgar, um, so um, for some people who are new to the deck, I guess, what are some insights or plays that are maybe not very intuitive um, that, you know, a new player to the deck is always going to or will probably think is the right play, but it's probably the wrong play? What kind of uh, do any of those types of decision making situations ever come into play where, you know, I don't know, someone picks a certain type of secret with arcane keysmith when they should always be picking something else or are they playing doomsayer and a freeze effect when maybe they should be staggering them or is there anything that sticks out to you as a not very intuitive but a very important part of the strategy for freeze mage yeah there's a couple of things like freeze mage has always been like a very difficult deck to play at mm -hmm. some point it was considered like one of the hardest decks to play so there really is like a bunch of options and it's Playing the deck is really knowing like which option to choose. Example, like um Arcane Keysmith, basically um against like Warrior, you always want to get either Counterspell or, or Spellbender, mostly Spellbender, because um to win that matchup, you need to be able to play 
big minions mm -hmm. and um, big minions um, if you have spellbender up they have a higher chance of uh, surviving counter spell is um, also good but not as good as spellbender because it's easier for them to um, play around that okay. uh, check for it and then use removal while like they only have shield slams and executes and control wire to check for spellbender and you're already getting rid of removal through that and you're always happy to see that other stuff uh you always want to hit like barrier against most aggro decks um sometimes it um there's only six secrets so it is it's basically a coin flip on hitting the exact secret you want mm -hmm. so sometimes yeah you're not always hitting in the one you want you have to choose like the second or third best like against rogue you might not hit um you might not hit barrier and then some people think that like going for mirror entity is the best but most of the time mirror entity just really doesn't do much especially when they have lackeys and then yeah. all you get is a one one um even like a splitting image is better most of the time um with this deck actually um you can actually set up keysmith on four so many times i do that i just drop the keysmith on four get the splitting image uh the rogue would just backstab the keysmith and then i can just drop a rotten apple bomb and if they don't mm -hmm. have to zap then that's two yields two rotten apple bombs oh, that's oh, a huge oh. turn it's really good huh. um i think doomsayer is actually a card that requires a lot of skill to use um you're not always using it with trees sometimes you use doomsayer and you would play a doomsayer and expect it to die you're playing it to basically give yourself seven, seven hp yeah yeah no that's yeah, that's, like that. that's cool no, and that's definitely those are definitely big things like when when i first started playing freeze mage that's a mistake i always made i, I would always like if i didn't have a temple like this is back when like mech mage was popular and stuff right like and if i didn't have a tempo doomsayer on two or whatever to just like clear and slow it down a bit like i'd always save it for like five right nova and doomsayer and then later on i realized well you know man i just need to get to this turn and i just needed to buy me like you know seven health this turn or whatnot right and then you can start staggering them right like doomsayer one turn blizzard the next turn flame strike next yeah. turn or whatever and which i mean yeah, it helps you save a way more cards in hand and get get a lot more value out of out of stuff in your hand, I guess. Um, you know, I was playing this deck the other day. I was tr I was trying to pilot the deck a couple of games the other day, and I didn't run into any rogues, but I did run into a couple of warriors. Um, what do you suggest if I know that it's likely control warrior? What am I looking for in the mulligan, and how am I approaching that game plan? Like, how do I put pressure on them so that by the time I lay down an Alexstrasza, they haven't already gained 45 armor. You know what I mean? Yeah, so Warrior is one of your harder matchups, but in my stats, it's actually I actually have like a positive win rate versus Warrior. I'm around like 65% versus them. Wow. Um, yeah, like and you, uh, it's the same with other people. They, they, they also think Warrior is a hard matchup, and it is. But there's like specific things you actually need to do in the matchup. Um, first, Mulligan, um, you do want to mull for Archmage Antonitis, Power of Creation, Alex Straza. Those are like the main cards you want. Um, you can keep AI because you have a higher chance of trying those cards. You really want to put as much pressure as you can in the later stages of the game. But before then, what you want to do is actually focus on chipping away their armor. Um, basically, every game versus warrior, you're going for an Alexstrasza plan. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're going for an Alexstrasza plan, that means that their HP doesn't really matter until after Alexstrasza. Yeah. So, like, I... Um, there would be times where they would be at like four or five armor and then I need to get rid of a card like um, and it could be like or I don't or I could uh, play a fireball but I won't play a fireball because then I would actually be losing damage if I were to use a fireball right now. I would wait until they're like six plus armor to use 
Ah, okay. Like small, small, small things like that. Like I pretty much never use burn against uh, on any of their minions. Mm. Uh, sometimes, sometimes I'll use like a frostbolt or something on an acolyte. That's worth it sometimes. How but in rover? general, like, uh, what was that? Eternian rover. Eternian rover. Um. No, I, I don't think it's worth using a Frostbolt on the rover. Um, I feel like you... A rover being on board doesn't really matter for you in the early stages of the game. I feel like um, it's eventually going to die to like one of your minions or maybe a board clear. Mm -hmm. And just like an early rover isn't worth using burn on. Like, that would... Like, if you were to use a Frostbolt, you're giving them two armor. You're giving them two armor, and you're also losing three damage on their face. So mm -hmm. you're, basically, you're basically losing five, um, five damage by doing that. That's true. How about, uh, so, I mean, I'm guessing in that matchup, you kind of save Ray of Frost to use with Antonitis or something? I mean, just to get more Yeah, pretty much, pretty much all the time. Um, against Warrior, you want to save both your... Um, if you're on the coin, you want to save both your Ray of Frost, um, generate five fireballs, and also save the coin. Um, so you need to be at, like, eight cards in your hand before you can do it if you want to generate five fireballs without overdrawing. And five fireballs is a lot. That is a thirty damage. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that, a lot. Of that's that, that's a lot. And if you can set it up, um, you're happy. Um, uh, without the coin, you can only set up three, which is eighteen damage. That's the twelve damage difference just um, by yeah. not being on the coin. Wow, Crazy. see, that's a big. Yeah. I mean, that's you know, I I was challenging a warrior, and we were get. I mean, I was close. I had this guy really, really low, and this is after he played uh, the uh, Doctor Boom or whatever. So, and then I was really just like, yeah. man, I really need to find another like five or six damage. And now that you're telling me this, like, I I know already that I played the coin the coin earlier. Like, I played it with the Caligos into like Pyroblast or something, and I'm just like, hmm, I could have. And it wasn't until yeah, I played like, the Antonitis I'm thinking, like, man, if I had that Ray of Frost that I had earlier, this game would have been done. But, you know, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's, I pretty much, like, always save the coin. Um, very rarely I would use the coin um, and not generate 30 damage. That's only if I somehow manage to get them low enough through, like, Power of Creation and then just early minion pressure after an Alex. And they're, like, at, like, 5 or something HP, then as I'll be like, okay, I can probably just generate one or two fireballs with this Antonite and try to end the game in like two or three turns. How about versus Rogue? Uh, you mentioned that Rogue is a is a much easier match, or that's something that you'd love to queue yeah. into. And I, you know, I can see yeah. how Rotten Oppenbaum is ridiculously strong versus Rogue because not only because of the heal, but because of the five health break point, and you know they're gonna have to swing a weapon in there, and you know you have weapon removal, and you know even the four, the pick can't kill an apple bomb on its own so uh well how do you play that matchup in general like what what is, what is the goal what are you how are you trying to close out the win there yeah so against rogue you're pretty much always playing defensively um the second they run out of steam which that doesn't always happen because of cards like myros and yeah. this can generate a lot of um a lot of resources but you do need to play defensively, and um, once you're ahead on board, you can start going offensive. You know, okay. I usually, uh, of course, you're looking for cards like Booze uh, to deal with Pick, because Pick is probably the strongest card against you. Uh, Doomsayer. Um, most people stop running Hench Clan Thug, so mm -hmm. I don't think there's too much reason to keep Frostbolt, actually. A lot of people would keep Frostbolt, but... Um, I actually think there are much better cards to have instead of Frostbolt, so I actually throw it now. Um, I look, I try to go for cards like Keysmith and Rotten Apple Bomb because you're eventually going to need that extra armor and HP hmm. because they just have they have a lot of burst damage, but if you can survive it, then you can start fighting for board and just win the game over two or three turns. You just uh, need to be able to reach that point. Let's see. 
do you ever hold intellect in any matchups? Arcane? Um, intellect, or yeah, arcane intellect. Do you, do you ever? Hold yeah. Um, um, for the slower matchups, I do like warrior. I would keep it, um, because basically, when you mulligan a card, you're basically replacing a card with another one, right? Yeah. For AI, you're actually getting two cards in place of AI, so I think it's always worth keeping it for slower matchups. Okay. Against stuff like Rogue, um, yeah, I I sometimes can even it, it's a hard call, but like something like Acolyte is better. Mm. Um, it's if the rest of my hand is good, then I'll keep AI. It's just you're not always going to go with an AI play on three. Mm. Not not at all the time. Like some like a lot of the games I wanna be able to like drop a Doomsayer or go like Doomsayer Ray of Frost, something like that. So I noticed uh or when you were talking earlier about how your new version of the deck um remove the rotten apple bombs because you're facing more of these uh, mage mage decks um what is rotten apple bomb the flex spot where people should the first card that they should look to cut if they're facing um a meta like that is warped in a certain direction like you know if they're i mean obviously if they're challenging only rogues then rotten apple bomb works very well there but um if they're facing a yeah. lot of uh, control warrior um, is rotten apple bomb a card that they should cut for something else that could maybe hedge that matchup um the cards i would cut from the list are or the list is actually very tight i think the only flex spots are arcane keysmith rotten apple bomb um one sun reaver and flame strike i actually uh sometimes pyroblast yeah, uh, sometimes Pyroblast, depending on the meta. But I would say those are the only cards that you want to consider cutting. Um, Freeze Mage. Uh, you can cut the Power of Creation, but only if you're running, like, Mountain Giants plus Conjurers. Because that is, like, a different version of Freeze mm -hmm. Mage. It runs the Giant plus Conjurers package. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's pretty different. Um, I would... Yeah, Keysmith and Rotten Apple Bomb, they're mostly there for aggro, and if you're not facing that much aggro, you can I mean, say you're queuing into Miracle Mage. I would put in like Voodoo Dolls, mm -hmm. um, Polymorphs, those are, those are fine to deal with like early giants. Um, Warriors, you can actually take in Astromancers. That actually helps the matchup a lot. Astromancer? Hmm. Yeah, I think they were pretty decent. Um, but I probably wouldn't do it like as of right now, just because there's just too many matchups for Astro Masters just isn't that good. Like, it's mainly just for Warrior. If you were going to enter a specialist tournament like tomorrow, would you bring Freeze Mage? Uh, and if you did, oh yeah, what, what um, would you bring as a secondary and tertiary? Maybe not exact card builds, but what kind of decks would you try to come back uh combat with the other two lineups yeah there, there's actually um it's actually a team out there uh team no pros i think they do a special they do like specialist reports like every week or so yeah and they said um i think like last week or maybe two weeks ago they said freeze mage is an underplayed deck in specialist tournaments but it's one with an incredibly high win rate. Really? So yeah. So I think I think more people need to try out Freeze Mage, both from ladder and in specialist tournaments. I think it's very powerful. Um, if I were to bring it in a specialist tournament, though, um, the main deck would be primarily for Rogue. So probably like the list right now mm -hmm. um, is. Might just be the main deck, and second and third is usually reserved for warrior and mage. Um, no need to like tech for Nomi Priest because I think this deck does very well versus Nomi Priest. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Warrior, you can add in cards like Cadgar, uh, Astromancers, uh, Messenger Ravens. Uh, Messenger Ravens are actually very good versus Warrior. Hmm. Not so much in other matchups, but for Warrior, it's like it's a card that cycles itself, and you get to play another big threat. It's actually very good, especially when you're also putting Cadgar in the list. Same. And then for Mage, which I'm not, I'm not sure how often. Um, the new Miracle Cyclone Mage is being brought, but I know Dragon Mage was very relevant in the past few weeks, so I would add card. They also run the giant Contrast package, so I would also put Polymorph, uh, Voodoo Doll. Cool. Uh, yeah. So Dave, man, I've kept you here for a long time, but before we close out the podcast, I wanted to ask you if you tried the new uh, Dalaran Heist little adventure mode. I actually have not yet. I actually, um, oh man, I've done like none of the rogue like um, single player content. Actually, really, I think for like yeah, I think for like a year or two, um, my quest log would just have two oh, slots just for just, that's just like a do a dungeon run. And Dear. do monster hunt. It was just like that for like a year and a half, and I was just getting no gold whatsoever. And then a recent update, like two or three months ago, actually he let um let people or you you couldn't um you couldn't remove that quest or you couldn't recycle it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Before, yeah. yeah so it was actually just stuck there. And then a recent update made it so that you actually can. I was so happy that day. Oh, oh my God. See, that's <laughs> and, a competitor. Yeah. Man. You don't care about the single player like solo adventure at all. Like, I don't know. Like I've seen other people do it, and it looked fun. But for some reason, I had no drive to do it myself. Uh, no, like this time around, like I I did the other like solo adventure content. And then this one is kind of like a mix between the two. So I don't know. Maybe I'll actually try it out this time. <laughs> Dude, this one is super deep. Like, I, I don't want to be a advocate for uh, solo play, but I like I, I always joke. I like Hearthstone. So I like all aspects of Hearthstone, yeah. whether it's wild or standard or whatnot. But Adventure Mode is fun. And like, I, I'm just obsessive compulsive. So I like to, you know, I'm like, oh, I got to beat it with all the classes. You know, I got to. I gotta beat all the heroic things, right? But I mean, dude, it's it's actually pretty deep. There's like, there's a lot of different variety. Yeah, it, it looks like they put cool. a lot of effort on this, on this one. I know. It looks like they took all the grandmaster's effort and specialist effort, and they put it into the solo. <laughs> 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 exactly. <laughs> But on that note, man, you know, thank you so much for jumping onto the podcast. Um, I wanted to give you a little moment if you, you want to shout out anybody or let people know where they can find you um, on Twitch or Twitter or whatnot. Um, yeah, and anything you want to say to anybody listening. Yeah, um, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, my Twitter is at SolidGitHS, and my Twitch is also SolidGitHS. Um, I do have a YouTube. I'll be working on that eventually. Um, my team is Team Diverse. You can find them on Twitter, DiverseGG. And uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> okay, man, yo, one more question. Do you have a Diverse yeah. Esports jersey? I have a t-shirt, but no jersey No yet. jersey It's, it's yet? a very... It's it's a very new team, okay, so we're okay. still working on a bunch of things. They need right to get you a jersey. I, I, you know, I ask every guy who comes on the stream who has like a, a, a sponsor, esports sponsor. I'm like, man, you gotta get a jersey. Like, cause I, I don't know what it is about these esports jerseys, but I always think they look so cool. They're awesome looking. Kind of got like a little professional feel to it. So I hope that for your graduation that, gift, that these guys definitely soon. get you one of these, man. So yeah, for sure, it'll it'll definitely happen at some point. No, David, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. You know, congratulations uh, for, you know, all you do in Hearthstone and for graduating in a month. Uh, I hope you find whatever direction it is your life takes you. I hope you find exactly what you're looking for and many, many, many more high legend finishes and wonderful things in your life. Uh, everyone at home, thank you for listening. And we stay tuned next week where we talk to Danny Donuts about some wild action. And he has a special Kingsbane list for that episode. See you guys.